After studying this module, you shall be able to define what is language, understand the origin of language, differentiate between human and animal language and know the structure of language. Language is a system of symbols with an agreed upon meaning that is used by a group of people. Language is a means of communicating ideas or feelings by the use of conventionalized sounds and signs, thus being the spoken and written language. It is a human tendency to communicate with others and this could underlie the emergence of language. Montessori said, to talk is in the nature of man. Humans needed language in order to communicate and soon the parts that come with language were revealed. This module will help you understand about language, its structure and its evolution. Let us first try to define what language is all about. Language is a system of symbols that are used to communicate ideas among two or more individuals. Language uses both mental and external representations. Thus, it is a system for combining symbols such as words, letters, by which numerous meaningful statements can be made for the purpose of communication with others. In conversation, the speaker and the listener exchange mental and intellectual thoughts through spoken rather than written symbols. It further helps us in putting one's ideas across each other through our own mental activity. In other words, language is a very important part of how people think. The important function of language is to use symbols to convey meaning. Humans use words or patterns of sound to refer to objects, events, beliefs, desires, feelings and intentions. For example, your friend tells you that she is happy today. This holds meaning to you as you can interpret it and this explains about her emotional state also. But on the other hand, if she whistles a tune, her behavior may not say something about her emotional state, but it is less meaningful. Unlike speech, whistling is not specialized to convey clear meaning. Clark and Clark in 1977 explained that languages share four elementary properties. They observed that children can learn them, adults can speak and understand them easily. They capture the ideas and information that people generally communicate and this can further enable communication among groups of people in a social and cultural context. Language is considered to be the most refined and sophisticated human ability. Therefore, this is the reason for language to be possibly associated as one of the most difficult areas for understanding. Despite the fact that there are numerous methods available to research language. In short, humans live in a world which is affected by language. Now the question that intrigues us is what is the origin of language? It has been the topic of scholarly discussion to understand the question how did language begin? The answer to this is still unknown and perhaps will never be but the question is too provoking to ignore. One problem that makes the topic difficult to study is the lack of direct evidence. Linguists studied the relationship among the written records of ancient languages about 5000 years ago and reconstructed what they believed early languages were like up to 10,000 years ago. A long debated idea is that language developed from gestures. However, it appears that language and gestures may well have evolved together. 
when our ancestors first began to communicate their ideas and thoughts to other individuals they required a way through which they could specify objects and further relate to those objects it is well known that gestures are often synchronized in time with oral statements to convey meaning therefore it was this gestural development that led to specialized way for communication of information another view point in the origin of language evolved as a consequence of the large brain of humans language might be an example of taking existing biological structure and adapting it for a new purpose the concern which arises with this view point is that language is a very complex function it has been said that the possible alternatives would be that language and its large brain must have emerged more or less simultaneously how it is different from animals this is another question that has intrigued all the psychologists now pioneer work in this area was done by frisch where he assessed the communication process in the animals therefore humans are not unique in using communication or exchange information between sender and receiver animals also use use forms of signals which are coded which are understood by both the animals for example the waggle dance of the honey bee directs other members of the hive to distant source of nectar the precise nature of the dance communicates the direction and distance from the hive which has been discovered by the dancing bee other examples including these communications are seen among monkeys where they give alarm calls and even the complex signaling of the dolphins and whales all these explain the nature of signaling which further leads to communication of information in the other primates there are at least three ways in which communication differs with that of other primates first difference between animal communication and human communication is that animals do not use symbols to represent objects for example the dance of a honey bee conveys information about the environment after the bee returns to the hive the communication to other bees is about the location of the nectar source the honey bee dance cannot be termed as symbolic in nature because it is linked directly to the situation it is not a separate entity that the bee is using to communicate later when they are returning or preparing to go to a food source the symbols involved do not simply express emotions rather they describe or designate objects events or actions on the other hand for human beings words are detached from their reference and we use them to recall events from the past or to imagine events that have never happened so human language can transcend boundaries of time and space also humans are purely arbitrary symbols that have no relation to the concept being communicated another major difference is that most animal communication does not involve a theory of mind when human speak the listener learn thing about the mind of the speaker such as his or her attitudes or behavior in a particular manner tests on animals have failed to reveal that they make any contribution about the mental state of the others therefore humans attribute the mind of the listener and the frame of the communication accordingly now let us look at the structure of language what are the different components of language 
what is it that constitutes what we call together as language spoken language can be broken down into a number of elements such as phonology syntax semantics morphology and pragmatics these have also been referred to earlier language is a means of using words that help in communication we have already read about this however it is also used to gather information from our environment for example if you have spent time in a country that speaks a foreign language you would be aware of how difficult it is to communicate and obtain information from local affairs this clearly helps in understanding when we are deprived of something we fully appreciate its function and value in order to study language one needs to understand the types of physical and linguistic information involved such as speech and the written word we begin this statement with an analysis of phonology syntax semantics and pragmatics before considering more general theories of language now let's understand what we mean by phonology the study of linguistic sounds is known as phonology it refers to the congregation of sounds made by the mouth tongue vocal cords and so on whose combination produces speech the basic unit of speech is the morpheme each morpheme is produced by the vocal apparatus in the unique manner the p of p and b of b are pronounced nearly identically they differ only in the vocal cords vibrate for b but not for p this difference is called voicing another distinction is which languages differ from each other in which languages differ from each other is in terms of the sorts of phonemes that are used phonemes basically consists of consonants such as b b or vowels such as i a phonemes are also voiced as b k g etc or voiceless like s t etc and are characterized as such based on the location at which the initial sound burst is made whether it is in the vocal cords which is voiced or within the mouth which is considered to be voiceless syntax is another landmark of language and its structure the grammatical rules that specify how words and other morphemes are arranged to yield acceptable sentences are called syntax syntax is referred as only part of the study of grammar that contains a set of rules by which people speak and write correctly a sentence consists of a number of words the way words are put together to form sentences is known as syntax it is used in the rule of language the grammar helps in placing the words in the correct order to form meaningful sentences for example if we transpose two words in the sentence the dog bit the man to form the man bit the dog we create an entirely different meaning if we recall from our english lessons words are categorized as nouns verbs adjectives adverbs and so forth in english the first noun is the subject of the sentence and the second noun is usually the object between them is usually a verb thus in the previous example the sentence are of the form of subject which is a verb and then an object this is known as a svo word order in which 
subject comes first verb comes second and the object comes later it has been estimated that 75% of all languages use the svo form now let us move to semantics syntax alone is insufficient to abstract meaning from a sentence whereas semantics is the study of meaning the theory of semantics must explain how people mentally represent the meaning of words in sentences the expression of one's thought and their comprehension by listeners and readers obviously depend on these mental representations the obvious example that would be that of formation of sentences depend on svo word order but it would hold no meaning if meaningful representation is not achieved as in the sentence the jumper milked the sideboard the study of semantics is concerned with how we process the meaning of linguistic information there are five aspects of language that are important for the study of semantics these are ambiguity anomaly entailment conflicting meanings and implication let's see what each of these mean ambiguity means the words can have more than one meaning and this can make a sentence ambiguous as in go to the right table does this introduction uh, this instruction refer to the correct table or the table on the right hand side anomaly this is a sentence with correct syntax but one has no meaning as in table fly long hairs in the air now this sentence does not have a meaning although the syntax or the order is absolutely correct entailment in our language we often say something that conveys more information than that contained in the sentence as in if we say vita is my best friend who further uh, reviews by inference and uh, that my best friend is a female then a sentence may also have conflicting meanings a sentence may contain items that appear to contradict with one another as in uh, for an example uh, my cat is not my pet generally my cat and my pet would be synonymous except that here the words does not create a conflict it also means that the cat is something more than just a pet then implication words in sentences can have more than one meaning let us take an example to understand it in a much better manner students hate annoying lectures it could lead to two interpretations those students dislike those lectures who can be annoying or that students dislike annoying their lectures let us now understand what refers to morphology in our previous discussion we have understood the phonemes are the basic physical units of speech whereas morphemes are the basic units of word meaning morphemes include prefixes such as pre un miss this and so on and suffixes such as s ness d and so on as well as individual words let us understand this with the help of an example the word skirts have two morphemes skirt which is article of clothing and s which is a suffix to denote more than one of these items morphemes which include more prefixes and suffixes are not words by themselves but are therefore said to be bound morphemes that are words by themselves are said to be free the last aspect in the language structure is known as pragmatics language is used differently 
for referring to many different contexts. Pragmatics concerns about the social rules that determine how language is used in certain contexts. For example, you might describe your college differently to a future employer than you would do to a close friend. In the former, you might emphasize on the academic aspects of being a student at a college. But in the latter, you might emphasize the social aspects of college life. According to Bryce, conversations in different contexts vary according to four maxims. Thus, a discourse can be highly informative versus weakly informative completely truthful or untruthful, most relevant or irrelevant, perfectly clear or completely unclear. People vary on each aspect depending upon with whom they are conversing. So for example, someone who is lying to their boss about why they didn't turn up for work might use a discourse that is weakly informative, untruthful, irrelevant and unclear. On the other hand, the same person talking to a friend might use a discourse that is informative, truthful, relevant and clear. Other rules of conversation have been identified that concern the type of utterance that, may, that might be used. An assertive is a statement of opinion or belief as in, I study more than my fellow students do. A commissive is a sentence or a statement that commits the speaker to some action as in I am going to study for three hours this evening. A declaration is a factual statement as in I spent two hours watching television yesterday evening. A directive is an instruction directed to the listener as in carry these books for me. An expressive is a description of the speaker's internal state as in I am so pleased I got an A plus for my cognitive psychology essay. In each of these cases, it is the listener's job to respond appropriately and some statements require more of a response than others do. Therefore, the pragmatic dimension of language stresses the essential point that language involves a dialogue. Speaking is a bilateral activity in which it is equally important to listen to what others say in response to your utterance. Not only must the speaker engage in self-monitoring behavior to avoid any error or miscommunication, but he or she must also monitor listening to their understanding of what is said. This brings us to the end of this module. Let us quickly go through all the points that we have studied here. The first thing is that language is a system of symbols that are used to communicate ideas among two or more individuals. Language uses both mental and external representation. Linguists studied the relationships among the written records of ancient languages about 5000 years ago and reconstructed what they believed early languages were like up to about 10,000 years ago. The origin of language evolved as a consequence of the large brain of humans. Pioneer work in this area was done by Frisch where he assessed the communication process in the animals. Spoken language can be broken down into a number of elements such as phonology, syntax, semantics, morphology and pragmatics. The study of linguistic sounds is known as phonology. It refers to the congregation of sounds made by the mouth, tongue, vocal cords and so on, whose combination produces speech. The grammatical rules that specify how words and other morphemes are arranged to yield acceptable sentences are called syntax. Semantics is the study of meaning. The word 
concept, uh, the theory of semantics explains how people mentally represent the meaning of words and sentences. Morphemes are the basic units of word meanings. Morphemes include prefixes and suffixes as well as individual words. Pragmatics concern social rules that determine how language is used in certain contexts.